Welcome to Back on Your Bullshit. I am your host, Kate Morris. I'm a qualified nutritionist and personal trainer who fell in love with helping women build strong, healthy, and confident bodies. This podcast talks all things health, fitness, mindset, and business, helping you get back on your bullshit, take control, and build your dream life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to another episode of the Back on Your Bullshit podcast. Today, we are joined by a special guest, owner and CEO of Pulse Entertainment, Dom. Welcome. Hi. Thanks for having me. No worries. (laughs) Have you ever been on a potty before? I have. I actually have my own back in lockdown of 2020. Let's not bring up lockdown. That gives me actual (laughs) trauma and PTSD. (laughs) I'm not even kidding. Yeah, no. It It was a pastime. Definitely not as good as this setup, that's for sure. I know, we were literally, before we like went went live on yeah. air, we were playing around with this stuff and Dom goes to me, she's like, thank fuck I never took my podcast yeah. this seriously. <laughs> this is a whole fucking thing. I know, there's a mic, there's a little sound barrier, there's like two iPhones and I green know. lights, it's a whole thing. And you know, I still need to upgrade it. I was literally saying, I think I messaged you like prior to you coming and I was like, mm. I need to buy like professional cameras. Yes. But I just haven't done it yet, so... Add that to the list of things to do. Look, the iPhones are good enough. Like, yeah, they'll do for they're now. They're quality. They'll do for now. They're quality. So thanks for joining me. I'm super excited today. So give everyone, the, everyone the listeners, everyone listening <laughs> along at home. It's going to be one of those a little bit, A little bit of an intro, like who you are, what you do, how we kind of know each other mm. and yeah, go for it. Well, Kate and I know each other because I pay her to be my friend. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can't um, say that. Yeah, no. She said it. No, I did say it. No. Um, so, basically, my name's Dom. Nice to meet you, everyone. Um, I'm a little bit awkward. Just not at all. Just like you say, you you're well. awkward, <laughs> and wait until you guys hear the fucking level of this girl's business. Oh. You guys will all pass away. Yes. Because it is um, super impressive. And I've also passed away already. But, um, <laughs> basically, I'm a professional dancer and I own a business, as we all know. Well, yep. now we know. Um, and basically, that's kind of like the synopsis of it. And we can go into detail about it later. Yep. But Kate and I know each other because after coming out of lockdown, I was like, I need a bit of like TLC. I need a bit of love. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe some hard love um and kate has been personal training me for like over a year over a year i was about to say two it's years but it's definitely not been two years it's over it's I think it's, it's our our one year anniversary was may oh that's cute that you know yeah that. it's bad that i didn't know that <laughs> shit call me out of my shit on my own <clears throat> um <laughs> wow a full year yeah that feels like a really long time but it also feels like not a long time at all yeah it feels like it's been longer than a year like on my way here i was like oh it's like only been a year like it feels like it's been more than a year but i feel like because last year was so segmented and stopping and starting Mm -hmm. and going that's kind of been where like the multiple years come from yeah i I feel the same i feel like when you think about 2020 and like the whole lockdown thing It feels like it was almost like yesterday, but then also six years ago, if that makes sense. Yeah. So let's actually touching on lockdown. And Mm. I know that most of us probably don't want to talk about the whole 2020 vibe and the whole, (laughs) you know, what happened. But a lot of things happened for your business in that year, right? And I saw, without getting too deep, and obviously we don't need to talk about it, but a lot of struggles in terms of your business because your industry was fully shut. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that. Well, obviously coming into... What, like the pre-up to, <laughs> the pre-nut, the pre-up <laughs> to, uh, like, what was it, like, level, level stage two? Yeah, stage I can't even remember whatever. now. It's yeah. Like, it's like a fever dream. Like, I just don't yeah. even remember it. Um, but coming into that, like, full lockdown moment that we had, um, we were shut down probably about, I think it was like four weeks or maybe a month prior. It was mm-hmm. crazy because as soon as the Grand Prix stopped... Everything else stopped because yeah. everyone else freaked out. Everyone was like, oh my God, like zombies. Like, yeah. Because I remember it was like the zombie disease where people were like, oh my God. Dying like, in the streets. <clears throat> like for, collapsing, not dying, but collapsing <laughs> in the streets. Yeah. Crazy stuff. So with that, that kind of put a bit of a shook on 
I guess the industry as a whole because we were like well and have you had you just started your business here when was your business <clears throat> first born so I birthed my business in <laughs> April of uh, 20, 1999 uh, 2019. So we were nine months old when we went into lockdown, oh, which was fuck. that's no scary. Idea. Yeah. That's really fucking scary. And we were like gaining a pretty decent momentum. Um, yeah. And I felt like at the start of 2020, I was like, I always do this. I'm like, the year of pulse. <laughs> yeah. Every year is the year of pulse. But I'm like, yeah, this is the year we're gonna we're gonna smash it. Like I was like, all the goals that I have set for myself this year, we're gonna achieve. And then it was literally like two months in and it was like nothing and I was like sick that sounds really good um and I remember like I was I was at the Grand Prix working Mm. right set the scene it's the Thursday morning I'm driving in it was a Friday no it was Friday morning I was driving in from like the southeast into St Kilda and I get a text from one of the girls that I was working with and she goes hey look like how far away are you then we think they're shutting the Grand Prix and I was oh like bro God. I was like please tell me this before I pay $50 worth of parking what a fucking <laughs> sickening feeling yeah though. and I was like what the fuck like this is like really like that was gonna be like a $1,000 weekend for me oh personally wow. as pay yeah because I was working Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday oh. the whole Grand Prix which yeah. by the way if you've ever gone to the Grand Prix you know it's a lot of standing it's worse for the employees that work oh, at the activations imagine. it's horrible wouldn't recommend it um, at all. That's why I didn't do it this year. Because um, I was like, one, Can P- that idea. I was like, PTSD and two, I'm not working any no. other days. It's not no. happening. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so I got there. And when I got there, there was just like thousands of people like at the gate. And the securities weren't letting them in. They were throwing cans. They were wow. like, it was like the most violent I had ever seen people in a very long time. Yeah. And this was obviously pre lockdown protests that we had yeah. last year. So, like, I was like, whoa. What like, is I was going like, on? I'm just a little frigid girl. And also, girl. this was kind of pre-COVID as well. Like, yeah. we knew COVID was existing, but we hadn't gone into any kind of yeah. lockdowns. Well, we thought it was just because it we was thought faulty two corona weeks. drinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's two what weeks. I thought it was. I was like, oh, what? So, I can't drink a corona? Like, not that I drink coronas, but, like, <laughs> I was like... <laughs> just making that clear, guys. John doesn't drink coronas. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not a beer drinker anymore. But, um, or I'm not much of a drinker anyway, but... I was just like, what the hell? So it was still really, really new. Um, and then pretty much as soon as that happened, everything that we had planned for the mm. next four weeks was cancelled. Oh. And I had people going, hey, like, I don't want to come into work anyway because I don't want to get sick. Like, it was just this whole, like... Um, <clears throat> it's like a ripple effect, right? Yeah, like, it started with the one fear. thing. And then it just started trickling out to everyone else. And then at the time, I was also working, like, a, a retail job in a dance, like... Yeah dance realm of things like dance wear um and pretty much lost the work for the grand prix and then a week later i was pretty much let go from mm. that job so i went from having the most amount of work i've ever had in my whole entire life and also much. building your business from the ground up and building the business and then to then having absolutely nothing and not being eligible for any support either so i literally like pretty much plummeted into a space of like if i don't keep myself busy mentally or physically, I'm going to lose my shit. Yeah. <clears throat> which was... 100%. Crazy. So... So what did you do during that time to kind of pass time and keep your sanity? Well, I did a lot of things. <laughs> um, I started by doing... Um, there was this app called... I think it's called the Band app. I think maybe that's what it's called. I can't remember now. But it was an app where you could pretty much post like tutorials and stuff. Yeah. And I'd post tutorials on like Cory. Um, I would do like almost like classes online and I just felt like, especially in this time where like I couldn't afford to buy anything, yeah. why would I sell that to somebody online? Right. I was like, also like, I'm f- kind of fresh. I was like, I just want to put stuff out there. Yeah. So it looks like we're doing stuff. We're keeping busy and the brand's staying somewhat alive. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then what else did we do? I got a lot of the girls to do like Q and A's on Instagram and film content in that way. We did a lot of videos where we sent like set up phones and we filmed ourselves freestyling. We sent them to a video editor and he put them together to like promote staying at home. And yeah. it was like all of us in our pajamas. Really corny. Yeah. <clears throat> really, Love really it. corny, Love but it was it. good. It was cute to 
the weekend song. Yeah. Like, ding, ding, ding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that it was like the viral TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. We we're trying to make something happen, and obviously I was on TikTok as well, trying to make that happen. Um, which you made happen. Which I made happen. Low yes. key plug. Sixty thousand followers on TikTok. Sixty one point seven. Oh, Sixty one point seven. <laughs> Stand correct. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but TikTok's hard these days. Oh so man. It's a bit. I know. I've got one thousand three hundred followers on TikTok. Go but that's that's good. That's better Go than me. five. Oh man. It's still TikTok. a start. I also think like little side note. The whole like Instagram TikTok going. Mm viral mm. is so much harder these days it i is, always yeah. wish that i started this shit five years ago i actually started on tiktok wait we're gonna jump around you're gonna have to get yeah this. <laughs> strap yourself in guys i started on tiktok november like uh no it was october previous yeah. to lockdown so i was already on it in some form of a sense and i remember my first video that went viral which was horrible which was it was a video of me from like a year ago um prancing across like a walk a walking like zebra walking thing you know, yeah, like, yeah i think i've seen it actually. Yeah. yeah and then it was like <laughs> me on my way back back to my ex or something and i have my glasses on and i'm like not paying attention to anyone but i'm like prancing like like a horse and then all of a sudden i just <laughs> got like this <laughs> and then I'm like on my way back to my he- my my exes. That's hilarious. Um, and then that went viral. How like, funny is yeah. it? Like the dumbest shit goes viral. Oh, so dumb. And then there was a video of like um, there was just a few random funny videos that went viral for me. And then I was like, fuck. I was like, we could. I could really use this one to keep me like yeah. mentally sane um, and like active on the socials. But I could also use this to benefit my business at the yeah. same time. So we also launched a Pulse, a Pulse TikTok too. So do you recommend for other business owners that are listening to today's mm. episode to utilize social media and 100%. get on TikTok? 100%. I was on, what was I doing? I was doing TikTok, Instagram, Pinterest. Yep. Okay. Pinterest was huge. Yeah. So Pinterest, Pinterest is massive in America. It's huge. 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 Yeah. Especially if you if you're in like more of that e-commerce side. Yeah. Not like so much for creative. entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. But because I was like, you know what, it's actually going to bring traction back to the account anyway. Mm-hmm. I was like, utilize you know, it. Fuck it. Like, just do it. Like, anything is better than nothing. Yeah. Because um, I've been speaking to a lot of people in business lately who aren't using TikTok Mm. and I was very off TikTok as well. Mm. Like I was on TikTok watching videos Mm. in a fucking spiral for six hours a day, but I wasn't really like that open to posting for my business on TikTok. Then I saw the power of it literally a week ago. I posted one video that was like the dumbest video. It got like 485,000 views and I gained overnight a thousand followers. Yeah. Just and I know a thousand followers isn't a lot, isn't a lot. Yeah. But like, imagine if you were to have like three or four videos go, go viral and you gain way more followers. Yeah. Then from there you can funnel it back to your Instagram and the product or the event that you're selling. Yeah, and that was that was the huge like realization for me. Like, I was like, okay, like cool. This could one expose us to more clientele. Yeah. Or just even like I know that like the um, start of TikTok, people were getting paid to like go do things. Yes. They were doing TikTok events and stuff like that. I was like, how cool would that be, right? Like yeah. if- Imagine Pulse Entertainment at a fucking yeah, TikTok right? event. Yeah, That's like a, the TikTok awards or whatever. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, cool. Like, you know, and this was when the trends were quite like, you know, show your shoe collection, like stuff like that. Yes. It was a lot of like jumpy cuts. And, and it was a lot of dancing. So lots you, of dancing. you fall perfectly into that yeah, category. Yeah, lots of dancing, even though I was like, I don't want to do dancing, but lots of acting videos as well. So I would like, I bought a a bunch of lights with the barely any money that I had. Um, And I pretty much was just like, you know what, let's get creative. Mm -hmm. And I would film a bunch of content. I would put lights on, like I would do costume transition videos. Oh, which they, yeah, huge. Would take so much time, but um, I made it like, uh, I had to make myself a schedule as well because yeah. coming into the like the middle of the year, it was looking like, you know, we're possibly not going to come out of this yeah. anytime soon. Um, and I kind of had already had my spiral where I was like, you know, like I'll, I'll watch a couple of YouTube videos. Yeah. 
um, and then I'll watch movies and I'll be in bed all day. Yeah. That was kind of the vibe. I didn't like going out and walking Mm -hmm. in the air. Yeah. (laughs) And so obviously I didn't have a treadmill at home, so I was doing barely anything. Like I was really doing nothing. Um, And like the TikToks were like my sense of like doing one, some form of physical activity and then also just keeping myself mentally sane. Yeah. And I was also going to the dance studio as well, which was illegal at the time, but it's so fine because mental health. Yes. Um, but and also a sneaky way to grow your social yes. presence as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was really, really great. And then as we moved into the middle of the year, we started doing live streams. Yeah. So before live streams were illegal. <laughs> right. So we would find locations with scout locations and we'd go, this would be fucking mad. So we filmed in a cliff in Bo Morris. Yeah. Um, which was amazing. It was so cool. That was the first proper one we did, um, which was just insane. And like the idea originally was like, oh, we'll do a TikTok, uh, not a TikTok, we'll do a live stream and hopefully pop a donation link so people can like donate, donate something yeah, and cool. then that can go towards the artists that all put in yep. towards the live stream. Um, we got some donations on one that we did later on, which was like a full, like we were in a club. Um, but yeah, it was a bit of, it was a bit of a tiptoe thing. Like, um, obviously I came from the mind, like the mind, the mind, I came from the mind. (laughs) I came from the mind. (laughs) I am the mind. I am the mind. I came from the perspective of like, if I give opportunity to people to keep themselves busy, um, and keep them mentally happy and mentally yeah. fit as well as doing something that they love. Because the thing with dance is it's addictive, right? Yeah. Cause you're releasing so many like endorphins yeah. and so much dopamine. Yeah. As soon as you stop doing it, you're like clinically depressed. Yeah. Like yeah. you literally, it's like you've just like not done anything for your whole life yeah. like, and you've not danced for a day. Um, and like my partner always says to me, he's like, oh, you're always happiest when you're dancing. Like when you come home from your like class or come home from work, he was like, you are buzzing. And that's all the dopamine and the endorphins that I get from. All those happy endorphins from exercising and moving. Pretty much. So I was like, you know, this is going to benefit everyone in the long run. So we would do different live streams here and there and it started to build out and get a bit more consistent and, and build, um, a bit of traction and we had a good audience that would always kind of tune in and support, which is great. Mm. Gave me a create uh, creative outlet. We started to launch different acts as well, because whilst I was kind of doing things and splashing out here and there, I started to teach myself how to do fire Yeah, in the backyard, which yeah. my this mom is, didn't like. <laughs> this is another cool thing that some of you might know about Dom. Some of you might not, but she's a fire breather. Yeah. Which blows my fucking mind. Every time I see a video of you, (laughs) one, I'm like, how do you not... Actually, before I get into this, sorry, we're jumping all over the place. When Dom says she's a dancer... Yes. Let's just make this very clear. Yes. We are dancing at clubs, At clubs, but not like the adult clubs. Not like the dollar... The dollar Ripper. dollar tripper. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. a dollar tripper. I'm not a dollar tripper as much as we love and support the dollar trippers. We love them. I wish I'd get that pay- paid that much. Oh, I, must. <laughs> I wish that I wouldn't look like a rotisserie chicken on a yeah. fucking pole. And then I would be shaking my ass at a, at a club in front of men. But I cannot yeah. do that, unfortunately. Yeah. It's, um, <laughs> obviously, it's a, it's a very fine line between what we do. Um, yeah. And I think the costumes definitely save us. Yes. Um, it does get a bit tainted sometimes i find that like in just in terms of like looking on socials and stuff like that sometimes yeah. it does get a bit tainted um but that, that's the biggest thing is yeah we're not a dollar tripper so if you have ever been to a club if you guys are from melbourne you will see those girls that are like on the bar or on podiums mm. breathing fire that is dumb it's most likely me. Most likely Dom. <laughs> and this is yeah. what scares me, right? Like I see you on these podiums and you're like breathing flat fire and f- throwing fire around. Mm. And I'm like, how are you not burning the civilians? Like mm. this drunk civilian dancing close to your, f- your flames. Like yeah. what, one wrong mer- move, hair gone, eyebrows gone. Yeah. Well, there's actually third funny degree st- burns. <laughs> third degree burns on. Yeah. Literally. Um, there's a funny story about that actually. Cause there was one night where I, f- I first performed fire breathing, right? And I was like, 
was like a little bit nervous and I was yeah. like, fuck, this could go so wrong right now. I'm going to lose all my work. It's going to be like terrible. Right? I'm going to burn the club to the ground. I'm going to burn the club down. <laughs> um, and obviously like security is the biggest help, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of the venues, I have a really good relationship with one of the heads of security, um, pretty much every venue and they're like my security dad. Like, yeah. Bless, bless their souls. Love. And they normally, they're like, you Get can't, you can't, you, you'll have to watch the video. Yeah. But like, they're like moving and actioning their hands, like to get people out of the way and they're moving them out of the way for me. Which is great. Which is great. Yeah. Right. But this first night we didn't really establish that we needed that too much. Cause sometimes, especially at one of our clubs, which is Miss Collins, if anyone knows, there's this gorgeous big like bar, which is connected to the actual bar where you people bartend yeah. and you get drinks. Right. And I love to like sit on the bar yeah. and do outrageous stuff to the bar and get really close to people because people don't believe that I'm actually... It's real fire. It's like right? real fire, yeah. right? Yeah. They think I'm like some magician. I don't yeah. know. And so with this particular night, it was the first one, these girls were like standing and they were like kind of like mocking me. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, you know what? I'm just getting mad every time. Shout out. If I you're a girl, don't be that girl. Don't be that girl. Don't be that girl. I can girl. see you, yeah? Like, oh. I can see you. If you try to, like, if you're pretending to be me and you're mocking me whilst I'm dancing, I will whip a leg up and I will tell you to get the fuck up yeah. on the podium. Like, and I've done that before because it's just, like, mutual respect. I'm not trying to steal your boyfriend so... or your girlfriend. No. I'm just doing my job and getting my check and then I'm leaving. Yeah. Like, literally, there's and nothing to it. And it's also, like, you know, women <laughs> should be support. empowering other women. We yeah. shouldn't be, like... Yeah. mocking them making fun of them laughing at them yeah. using them to our expense as yeah. a joke like, there's, there's nice. a large majority of girls who actually like when hype you up yeah like and i love it as well because i always be like eh, 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 yeah you that's know, the like, best they love it but um this particular night these girls were just like kind of taunting me and they were getting closer and closer and closer because they were like trying to get a drink right but it was i had fire in my hands right yeah. and you know what? i was like fuck it i was like these girls are gonna move yeah and they're going to move fast. Yeah. And I when literally, I, ca- I gave them a countdown. I was literally holding the flame and I had the fuel in my mouth because I have to put fuel in my mouth to breathe the fire. Yeah. Um, and Which I gave them wild. a countdown with my hand. I was literally like, I was like three, two, one. And I just went for it. Yeah. And the look on these girls' faces as they screamed and ran backwards is nothing ever like it. Yeah. Hilarious. And then from the rest of the night, they were, like, staying away from yeah. it. Because they were like, oh, she's going to burn us. They learned the lesson. They learned the lesson. They learned the lesson. But, yeah, people, um, drunk patrons are a blessing, but also a curse when yeah. you're doing fire. Because they literally go, oh, can I touch it? Can I touch it? I'm like, sweetheart. It's a real flame. You will burn yourself. Yes. Like, you will burn yourself, and also, you're intoxicated. Mm. Um, so, it's a bit... And you do a level of training for this stuff, right? Like, yes. it's not just, like, you learn how to do it overnight, and you're on a bloody podium, breathing fire everywhere. Yeah. You're doing, like, levels of training where you're actually learning how to use it safely. Because I'm assuming yeah. putting fuel in your mouth is not the safest thing to do. Definitely not the safest yes. thing. Yes. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend doing that at home, by the way. Um, but... Doesn't fit your calories. <laughs> yes. Um, it's probably actually burning more calories (laughs) when I think about it, but yeah, no, with, with fire breathing, it's obviously a little bit more of a a task. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to lie. I taught myself how to twirl fire in lockdown, which was like pretty, pretty simple. And I, I had just been, I'm a, uh, I'm a visual and a hands-on learner. So I would watch people. And normally when I watch people enough, I can start to incorporate Figure what they're how to doing. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. And I do it on myself because I'm a very good problem yeah. solver. So, um, I used to be in a male strip show yeah. as a female duet, um, like partner and they would do fire in the show. And cool. I always said to them and I was like, sorry if you're watching this Zane or anyone, but, um, I always said to them and I was like, I want to learn fire. Teach yeah. me how to do fire. Right. Yeah. I went and bought the shit for it. Like, whatever and I always got told you can't do fire you could, you're a girl it's too dangerous you can't uh, do fire all this shit and then as soon as it hit lockdown I had the you, time if you know Dom personally you yeah. tell him can't, you can't do something I will fucking do it game like, over yeah so I literally I was like you know what fuck it I was like I'm gonna teach myself how to do it taught myself how to do it I practice like you know almost every night because obviously at night fire looks better and you can kind of see what shapes you're making yeah. and the illusions and whatnot and then coming into the start of 20 
2021, we had launched Fire properly, but we'd been doing it for about a year prior in lockdown, in live streams, here and there. Yeah. We did a few like bar stuff um, just to splash out and get into it and actually have some content mm. towards pitching this new app to clients, right? Because no one's going to just like take your word that you can do Fire. And just yeah, they like, want to yeah, we'll see. Book here, have all our money. And they we'll want to see you know, the proof. They yeah. want to see the proof. They want to see the safety. So like obviously there's a lot of safety involved as well, but... Um, a lot of the time, everything can be extinguished with a hand or a mouth yeah. or whatever. Or just even, like, you know, throwing it down. Yeah. Um, and so, at the start of 2021, we started to notice that it started to catch traction, yeah. right? And any business would know or any business, uh, business owner would know, when you start to, like, work with something new um, and it forms a trend... It's like wildfire, yeah. right? And you every wanna, dog is doing you it. You want to like take advantage of that yes. movement that you and the traction that you yeah. kind of have. Yeah. yeah. So it got really popular really fast and yeah. we were getting booked quite consistently. And then that's when our competitors started to jump onto it. Yeah. Um, and so then that put a fire in my bum and I was like, you know what? We can't just be like everyone else. Yeah. Like, it can't be, oh yeah, we're doing fire twirling and we're doing palm torches. We're doing yeah. this and we're doing that. I was like... Let's step it up a level. I need to I need yeah. to push it more. So I was like, okay, cool. Like, let's do fire breathing. So sick. And then that's when I got one of my girls. Um, shout out to Georgia. Um, she's in Ibiza right now. Oh. <laughs> she will not be listening to this she, podcast. She but will if not you be are Georgia, but get back on the beach in Ibiza and enjoy your day. Yeah. Enjoy your day. <laughs> yes. Um, and she has been doing fire breathing for a while, and she so graciously taught me how to fire breathe. Oh, amazing. Um, and so we were. At the time, it was only two female fire breathers yeah. in, in Melbourne that were doing wow. what we were doing. So you really broke into that niche. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Hot bitches doing fire. Shit. That was literally the quota. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what more could you want? Hot but bitches like, and how, fire. How interesting is that, that from like a business perspective, mm. you saw a gap in the market mm. and just fucking went for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. It was huge. and. Every fucker wanted it. Oh, of course. <laughs> Everyone wanted it. Of course. Yeah. So we ride, we rode the wave of that for a while. Now it's kind of calmed down a bit, but um, it's still like... If An anyone, added thing that you guys can yeah. do that a lot of other people can't in the industry. Yeah, especially n- nobody can do it like we can. All right. So in terms of like business-wise and your mm. industry, what's the competitive level like? Because when I was younger, I used to do dancing. <laughs> can you fucking imagine that? How embarrassing. I used to do dancing, but I got to a point where I was like 16, 17 and things started Mm. to get quite competitive Mm. and I always just did it for fun. Yeah. And I know like generally speaking, the dance industry can be a little bit, how you going and a little bit bitchy at times. Yes. Yes. So what's like your experience in terms of like owning a business? And then after this, I really want to talk about the level of your business Mm. because when I first found out about how full on Mm. and the actual operation that you're running i was Mm. literally blown away yeah it's It's fucking (laughs) crazy like crazy crazy it's crazy business i'm crazy girl um yeah look the the dance industry it's come a long way um from where it was Mm. i feel like it's still not as good as what it can be yeah there's a lot of we get put like uh, pretty much like toe-to-toe against each other our mm. whole lives, right? We're always told, oh, you need to be better. You need to be more like Stephanie, whoever Stephanie is. Stephanie needs to be more like you, vice versa. So from a very young age with the the generations above us, mm-hmm. they've always pitted us against each other, like yep. always. Um, and you've been dancing for how many years? Since I was out of the womb. Okay. So my whole so life. So your whole life yeah, you've been dancing. Yeah. Yep. So my mum owned a studio previous to me being birthed into the world yeah um so pretty much like my whole life and everything i knew was not a childhood it was the dance studio yeah that's pretty much like a synopsis of it um and even though i was there for fun there was a point where it was like wow like do i want to do this like this is a lot like um and especially when you go to high school and you start meeting other dancers from other schools and you're kind of in that realm. There is competitive. The level of competition. There's yeah. a lot of like. There's a lot of competition there. Um, and even if the school that you're you're going to is like quite rec and recreational and like it's fun and it's like everyone just does it because they love to move yeah. their bodies. There is always going to be a level of competition. Oh, I remember <clears throat> I did 
uh, VC, oh, was it? No, it would have been in year 10, so just before VC, before yeah. I moved schools, and I did dance as one of my subjects. Yeah. And, like, it was meant to just be fun. Like, my dance teacher at the time was, like, this woohoo, witchy, kind of, like, crazy love, lady. Love. Like, loved her, but she was always just, like, a bundle of fun. But there was yeah. always girls in my class. There was, like, three of them. I can literally, I can't remember their names, but I can picture their faces. They were so competitive, and it yeah. ruined it for everyone. Yeah, it's hard. It's like, you know, obviously you want to be the best that you can be. Of course, yeah. Like, I've never been on the mindset of like, I need to be better than this person. It's always like, how can I better myself? Yes. Obviously that's, you know, you can take it either way. Like, obviously you bettering yourself might make you better than the other person. Yes. Better we say in quotations. Yeah, better in quotations for those who can't see my hands. Um, (laughs) But, you know, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of work and it's the same with me. Like even when I was doing BC dance and Mm. bed dance, you know, there always would be those couple of people who still to this day, like it's like you left a sense of trauma. Mm. Um, and even like going into full-time study as well, because not many people know this. You don't just like go out in the industry one day and you're like, people are like, Oh yeah, have fun. Like yeah. you'll be a good dancer. You go and train, like you train eight hours a day, yeah. five days a week, possibly six days a week whilst working a part-time job whilst trying to fit in a social life, have mm-hmm. relationships with people, go out and party like you would normally do when you're like 18. Yeah. You never got the chance to really do that, which makes sense as to why I've made my career now. But, um, you know, even doing that as a full-time course, like there's a, a mental like load that you put on yourself. Yeah, And like course. teachers put on you yeah. and like, we <laughs> bless this. Like, I saw, I love this teacher to the death of me, but um, he was very, very hard on us for the first year that we were in our training with mm. him. And he would always say, I don't want chunky thighs. I don't Ooh. want chunky thighs. Um, or it's like, I don't want you to be too meaty. I want you to be lean, yes. but I don't want you to be too meaty as in like too yeah. muscly or too bulky. Yeah. Like I want ballerinas. Right. Yeah. And you know, his change and he's come a long way because we kind of, we were a very, out there push back yeah we push back a bit and bless like we grew together like as teachers like as a teacher and a student body like we grew together and we're still very close which is amazing which is really cute so Um, a little bit about that yeah in terms of like food nutrition training and all of that good Mm. stuff how do you go now because i know when we first started working together (laughs) The fear of you, your internal fear of eating more food yes, was huge. Huge. I was eating like tuna and rice for lunch. Yeah. And like, I tuna reckon and rice. like the first... <laughs> and balsamic vinegar. <laughs> and that balsamic vinegar, baby. It's really, it's actually really it's good, so but yum. not as a, a lone meal. No. Um, but yeah, they're definitely, I've learned more nutrition base from you mm. than I learned from any years of dancing yeah. and I like I did nutrition yeah. in my cor- most of my courses yeah. um, but I feel like it all plays a, a role it's very important in terms of who you let mentor you who you surround yourselves with yeah you know as someone like you know social media is huge these days mm. right as a business owner when I'm looking at either my girls or I'm looking at my guys or even if I'm just looking at um, you know the whole industry as a whole mm. You can see that there's like fluctuating trends in terms of weight and eating and oh, over exercising, yeah. and all of that stuff, and it's so dangerous. And there's days where it's I literally, sickening. I literally sit there and I'm like, has someone not reached out to you yet? Like, yeah, because I've been in that point where I was refusing, like when I first, very, very, very first started my company, I was refusing any sort of like people were like, hey, don't like we're concerned about you. I was like, no. And then I'd message someone else and be like, do you think I'm like too skinny? Yeah. You know what I mean? And it'd be that kind of like mentality. So did you struggle a little bit with like eating and food and I wouldn't say I struggled with eating. eating. Like I was, I was eating, but I was over exercising. Yeah. That was the problem. Yeah. So in that like first, like kind of nine month duration of like working and it got worse towards the end of the year in that, Mm. in 2019. But I was like, coming in and out of not knowing what to put in my body properly yeah. to fuel myself for what I was doing. For the had, level of activity. The level of yeah. activity. I also had just come out of two years of full-time dance training where I would eat a salad and then binge eat, you know, carbs because and I be... wondered why I was so hungry. Yeah. And then I would be punished essentially for doing that. Yes. Right. Um, and then I was like, well, you know, like it doesn't really make any sense for me. Like I just don't understand. 
And so then coming into that 2019, I was going to the gym at like nine o'clock at night. Mm. I'd work out for an hour and a half. Then I'd go to the studio and I'd dance till 1am. Yeah, wow. And then I'd go to sleep. And then so I'd your the level day. of output was huge. huge. Well, it still is huge. And it's, that's something yeah. that we always talk about yeah. in our check-ins because... Yeah. Dom is, as much as I love you to death, you're a fucking workaholic, yes. right? Yes. And we are trying to find that beautiful balance of having more Dom time, so more yes. me time, yeah. and where you can just chill the fuck out mm. and you're not doing anything physical mm. on your body. Because mm. as well as training, like you're in the gym and you train, mm-hmm. you're also teaching dance classes. Yes working in your business on the weekend at clubs yeah private functions everything else that you do in between yeah you are always moving yeah i'm always like i'm always doing lots of steps i'm always moving obviously like housework yeah you've got to keep doing housework i'm washing costumes like i'm always on my feet so it's like seeing obviously and experiencing it firsthand as someone in it when i start to see like the turmoil Mm. actually like come up in someone else yeah where they just haven't controlled that that part of their life or they might not be eating as as much or they're Mm. putting out too much i'm like fuck i just wish that we were on a speaking level that i could reach out to you yeah like but also like i can't like yeah I'm not the right person because then obviously that could come across the wrong way and if they are actually eating enough then I'm a dick right um but I think there's a massive like sense of uh guardianship and ownership over the girls that work for me and the guys that work in my company because as soon as I notice something yeah that seems to be a trend I'm like hey like let's have a chat yeah you okay how are you going what's your mentality like yeah you know do we want to go for a coffee do we want to check in because the last thing I need is someone who I work with and I employ go through what I'm mentally went through and physically went Mm. through early stages of me starting my business yeah because I wouldn't recommend that on anyone yeah like I was tiny and it still confuses me to this day how I got to that point and nobody let said me know, anything, you know? Yeah. And I think this too. Crazy. So when I, like, I'm like, obviously... Like, me wrong, people did let me know, but I refused to acknowledge yes. it. And it was like, once it got bad. And maybe it was the, the way they said it as well. Because yeah. I noticed, like, I weigh about 62 kilos now. Mm. But when I first started my health and fitness journey, I was 42 kilos. Yeah. I repeat this a lot on my podcast, so you probably already know, but I'm like nearly six foot tall. So 42 yeah. kilos for somebody six foot tall yeah. is fucking tiny, right? Yeah. And, and I, I, I'm 5'7", and I was just under 45 as well. Yeah, which is tiny, crazy, tiny, tiny. Crazy business. And I always think, and this was back when I was like in high school, right? Mm. And I always think like, you know, I didn't get my period until I was 17 because I was so small. Mm. And I always think like, nobody pulled me aside Mm. except for people assuming that I had an eating disorder without asking Mm. and nobody actually like came from a place of like love and compassion and was like is everything okay like what's Mm. going on Mm. and it's funny because I never had an eating disorder but I look back now Mm. and I'm like I don't think I had an eating disorder, but I definitely had disordered eating. Like I used to wear eating one meal a day as a badge of fucking honor. Yeah. Which is not a badge of honor. You're like eating a Freddo and you're like, and I'm like, wow, I've only had one Freddo today. Like that's not cool. I, so one of my very, very, very close friends, Mm. she had like obviously turmoil with eating food. Mm. Um, And that's just, you know, pretty much basis down to like the dance, the dancing background and the ballet background and and that kind of conformity that she was trying to fit into. Um, and a lot of the time we would like compare healthily, like we would compare our past traumas. Mm. And even though I didn't have the level of an eating disorder as per se, as what she did, you know, I wasn't forcing up any food or anything like that. I was restrictive eating. Yes. Like I wasn't, even though it might not have been consciously going, Hey, I'm going to count my calories. You were still like, I'll only have two meals yeah. a day and that I'll only do have me. two or I'll have rice with like balsamic vinegar. Yeah. Um, and that will do. And I always like, even this morning I was thinking, I was like, I just wonder like how it took me so long to realize that I don't have chronic fatigue. I had chronic fatigue from the fact that I was outputting so much. And you were eating shit all. And I was you eating had no shit energy. All. Yeah. yeah. And I had no energy for it. And that was one of the biggest things when we started working mm. together. I remember like maybe your third week when you got in your head around actually eating more food. Mm. I remember reading in your check and you're like, I've never had so much energy in my life. Yeah. How crazy is this? And I was like, yeah, yeah duh. Because yeah. you're fucking eating a normal amount of food for your, yeah. your body. Yeah. 
and it just it's just crazy and I, I know that my friend she was like oh like I just don't think like counting your calories is probably the best thing for you moving into like working with yeah. a PT and I remember I voiced that to you to yeah. a degree and I was kind of hesitant here and there um but it was less like restrictive it was more like I'm actually this not hitting world. I'm actually not hitting yeah. that amount of calories as it is. Yeah. Um, and, and this is the thing. Yeah. So calorie counting and macro counting, a lot of people, and look, it is not for everybody. Like yeah. I wouldn't recommend if you had a full blown eating disorder and you're yeah. still in your eating disorder to start counting calories. Cause yeah. it can be a restrictive way of eating. But I also do believe that power comes through education. Mm. If you are not educated in nutrition, mm. you do not know how much you actually need to be able to fuel yeah. the activity you're doing. Yeah. And the only way to do that is to learn mm. how calorie dense foods are. Yeah. And I feel like you can mm. now walk away with so much more power and education yeah. that you know, okay, if I'm really having two meals a day, that's mm. like 500 calories and that's not enough. Yeah. I need to be having like six meals a day yeah. because my output is 10 times more high than the average person. Yeah crazy realizations Mm. like absolutely crazy realizations and I think that's definitely put me obviously like still like you're still playing with the trauma of like past experiences and like there's days where I'm like oh I'm like you know I'm this or I'm that yeah and it's the people that are like around you that are like you're not Mm. you're just not seeing yourself the inner circle Yeah. yeah and like the biggest thing for me especially like with employees that I work with Whenever I hear any sense, any sense of like self-deprecation, mm. like they know hundred percent, I'm like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. I'm like, shut up. Yeah. And they like, it's always a conversation that we have. Is it me looking at this photo and going, I look a certain way or is it that trauma in my, the back of my head playing that game yeah. on me? Or and the, a lot of the time, the beauty standard. Yeah. it's the trauma. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, you're, you're beautiful. You're fine. The way you are is totally acceptable. I love you the way you are. Yeah. Again, if if I didn't hire you, maybe that'd be different, yeah. right? But also in saying that, I hire you because you are you. And like, you I'm are not, talented you as know, fuck. You're talented. I don't care how you fucking look no. all the time. No. Like obviously you got to look presentable and there's a degree of like... And there's a level of know, standard in your business in terms of yeah. like private functions versus in a club. I'm sure yeah. there's some sort of difference yeah. there. Yeah. But it's not based on what your body looks like. It's yeah. based on your talent. Yeah. And it's also just... It's just if you're, you know, if that conversation is still playing out in your head, like normally I can get away with being like, shut the fuck up. Mm. Like, I'm like, I don't want to hear any of it. Yeah. I was like, you wouldn't be here if you were that. Yeah. For example. A hundred percent. Um, so that's like the biggest conversation we have, but moving on to like load of like business. Yeah. So this is what I want Transition. To ask. Yeah. See, look at that. <laughs> Because I was like, you can, transition. <laughs> you can ask me another question about nutrition, then we're not going to get back no, to your business. No, no. So before we wrap up the potty, because we've been talking for like forty minutes already. Yeah, love it. How crazy. Yeah, I told you I wouldn't have. You wouldn't have a problem with talking. Yeah, <laughs> literally. So I want to know two things. Yes. How big is your organization? How many mm. staff members do you actually work with? Mm. And how do you go about the whole? systemizing your business so it flows Mm. and actually works Mm. so there is like i would say three different tiers to the business as a whole um in terms of its structure we've got our staffing Mm -hmm. which is anything from promo staff bar and booth staff to models right then we've got our dancers and this is not like a tiering system this is just like three separate entities that make up the business there is no way a hierarchy at all. No. I just want to let that, that people know that as well. And then there's the clients. Yeah. Right. So obviously we've got a group and body of clients. We work with over four states at the moment. Wow. Um, so we work in Queensland. We work in Sydney, which is launching tonight. Wow. Today's Friday, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Today's Friday. So launching tonight. Okay. We, we launch in Sydney tonight, which is great. So now that I like thought about it, now I'm stressing out. No. <laughs> Again. Do not do that. <laughs> Um, and then we've obviously got Melbourne, which is our, our home base. Yep. And we've also got Adelaide as well. Wow. Yeah. So obviously Adelaide, Brisbane, or well, Brisbane's a little bit more in fruition, but Adelaide and Sydney, they're quite fresh. They're quite new. So yep. they're in their like 
their fertility yeah. sides. Yeah. You know, they're just kind of they're early fermenting. Stages. Yeah. <laughs> they're fermenting. They're fermenting. They're like fermenting. A kombucha. Yeah, like a kombucha. <laughs> or a beer. Either, Either one. one. But not a corona, because <laughs> I don't drink coronas, right? <laughs> Bring it back in. Um, and then, yeah, so that kind of makes up that body of clients in terms yeah. of the different states. Um, and then obviously we've got, we've got the dancers in the different states, yeah. which I think... So how do you go about finding your dancers? I just scream from the top of the city that I'm in and I'm like, I need dancers. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, in terms of finding dancers, a lot of people will approach me, mm-hmm. um, sometimes and most most of the time, like I'd say probably 80% of the time, I go off recommendations from people I've worked with. Yes. Because I'm very particular with, I don't hire mean people. Yeah. If you're mean, you're out. Even if you're talented, I don't give a fuck. Like yeah. you're not working for me. Yeah. I can train any level of talent to be where I need it yeah. to be. I believe that. Because but you can't train personality. Exactly. You, you know what they always say in business? They say, Higher on personality, never on skill, because you can always teach skill, but you can't teach personality. Exactly. And a lot of the girls that I'm working with now in Melbourne, they weren't, you know, the top of the top, right? They mm. weren't, you know, the most skilled in heels. They might not be, they might have been the, the most flexible. They might be the best contemporary dancer. Yeah. But we've gone, okay, hey, like, here's a platform. Yeah. We're going to give you... <laughs> a a podium um <laughs> we're gonna give you the skills and the tools and especially Educate during lockdown you and upskill yeah. you especially during lockdown yeah we were doing a lot of upskilling and training and even though it was illegal at the time there was a lot of work that we put in to make yeah. sure that those dancers were ready straight away as soon as we came out whenever that was to walk out of the stage so i always go by recommendations um purely because i'm like if i work with you mm. and i like you and you like this person, then I'm probably going to like that person yes. as well. Um, so in terms of dancers, I would say we've probably got anywhere between 40 dancers across all four states. Wow. Obviously a lot more in Melbourne than we do in the other states. Yep. Um, but these might not be all working at one time. Like I've got a few girls who are out on contracts. So um, who does all your scheduling? You? Me. Oh my God. Yeah. And then I've also got You're the staff, crazy. which the staffing is around about 60 Wow. Just in Melbourne. And yeah. you're a sole owner. You do I'm not a have a business owner. partner. Nope. Because I refuse to work with someone wow. else. Wow. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. See, this is what I mean. So yeah. when I first found out about this operation, yeah. I was like, I remember coming home and I was telling Amand, my yeah. boyfriend, I was like, this bitch is crazy. Yeah. And I was like, Amand, you think I'm crazy in a yeah. level of business. You should see this level of business. Yeah. Insane. Insane. And it's like, it's constantly changing and evolving. It's actually well. inspirational. It's very, yeah. very like, Which you are my inspo. Oh, inspo. Uh, you gave me goosebumps. Um, Turn out. Yeah, I hate talking about myself as well. But like, I rarely do it because I think it's like, I didn't get into the business to be all about me. Yeah. It's not the Dom show. No. I actually couldn't care fucking less. Right. Yeah. But it is an opportunity because I found that when I first was in the club scene and in the industry, there was just so little diversity. Mm. And, it, you know, you're, you're like, oh, that's hypocritical coming from a tanned blonde girl. Mm. Um, not naturally tanned. It's, it's bleach. Fake. <laughs> it's fake. It's fake. Um, but, you know, diversity in the sense of, like, one, body shapes. Yeah. Heights. Yeah. Um, look. Yeah. It was all <laughs> blonde tanned girls yeah right and i was like you know what i'm fucking sick of this and you were ready to break the stigma i'm sick of it being the same fucking people every week even though those girls bless their souls they're talented they're amazing it just got overdone. But there's also amazing talented girls that aren't or like you know i have this one particular girl who's phenomenal they're all phenomenal but she is like arabic but She's just got this gorgeous face and gorgeous skin tone. Yeah. And every time I look at her, I'm like, oh my God, like how am I so lucky that I have you yeah. work for me? Yeah. Um, because I just like, you are so different to anyone else working in the industry right yeah. now. Like, you know, you have got that diversity in you, which is great. And obviously like I'm not hiring based. I'm not going, okay, cool. I need to get this person to fit my quota for the month. No. I need to get this no. person. But, but you also want to break the stigma around like being yeah. a skinny, white, blonde female. Not that being a skinny, white, blonde female is bad, but in terms of when you're constantly consuming the media and watching these people yeah. and seeing them in that, you go, wow, okay, I don't actually see myself doing that because being represented I don't look right like now, that. Right? Exactly. So if I wasn't seeing myself yeah. being represented, 
then there's people who also weren't being represented yeah. as well. So that was my biggest thing. Um, and then from there, like we built it out a fair bit, you could say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we built, like how many people? So 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 it has to count on my fingers for those because I yeah. failed mass. A hundred yeah. plus staff working yeah. under one human. Yeah. And you I, are a machine. Yeah. I, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> but it's insane. It's very, yeah. That's why I'm so particular. Like I have um, people go, oh, like, you know, are you ever interested in getting someone on board with you? Or yeah. like partnering. And yeah. you know what? I've had, I've had countless of offers from men. I've had men tell me, oh, if I was in your position, I would do this. I would do that. I would do this. And I'm like, that's because you're you and you're not me. Mm. So for me, the it authenticity is... comes from me doing almost everything. Yeah. yeah. Like I can offload things here and there, which is great because I've yeah. worked with people. There's a group of girls that I've worked with for three, four years now that I know and, and that know I love. You trust. Yeah. You know, and one of my friends, like bless her soul, we've been friends for like six years. So she knows every ins of my being. Yeah. She knows exactly how I want things yeah. to go. She knows the energy that I put into everything that I do. And she, I've always said that she and another girl, if anything were to happen where I need to bring someone else in, it would be those two yeah. girls. And you know what? Hiring in your business when you own your own business is such a scary thing. Because so scary, bro. One, majority of business owners are control freaks. Yes. The reason majority of business owners get into business is because they don't like being told what to do. And I hate being told they, what to yeah, do. And they have a level of, I want to make it on my own and I yep. fucking got this. Mm. So when you have to hire in your own business, and I've done multiple hires, some that have worked really well, some that haven't, and yep. not, they're all lessons learned, but mm. it is a fucking scary thing. You have to yep. let go of control. And me yep. being a control freak, it is so hard to do. Yeah. Letting someone else in your business like terrifies yeah. me. Yeah, it's it's scary, but it's also just like I have a very good gift at reading people. Yeah. There's only been a few times where I've kind of let my my compassion, my empathy get Take the best over. of me. Yeah. I'm the but same. <laughs> very, very very clinical um about who I hire and I'm not going to like I'm not going to bullshit people yeah. like you know, if you're not giving me what I need or then vice yeah. versa. Yeah. It's just it's a two-way streak, right? So I'm cutting you off because yes. we're going to run out of time. That's okay. But I want to know two things mm. you would tell your younger self. Oh, fuck me. As a, <laughs> as a beautiful little ending to the potty. Oh, how old am I? <laughs> 23. No, isn't like how old is my little oh, my like, younger self? Just like, let's say like 10 oh. What would you tell your younger self? Life lessons, Life not lessons. to be so hard on yourself. I probably wouldn't say not to be so hard on yourself because I feel like that gives a sense of personality. Yeah. Which is probably really dangerous when I'm saying that. But, like, I feel like everything that happens in your life happens for a reason and it sets you up to have a certain personality and have a certain work ethic. Yeah. And I wouldn't change as much as I didn't have the best childhood. Yeah. Like, I'll be the first to admit it. Um, I wouldn't change it for the world because it set me up for who I am today. So, yeah. you know, it's given me that that ground there. So I'd probably say, like, if you feel like it's shit now, <laughs> it gets worse. Um, <laughs> it only no, goes like, downhill from here. It only goes downhill. But it sets you up because my relationship to money and relationships and friendships, um, I'm so much more, what's the word, um, connected to them. Mm. Um, and I know how to, like, keep them and keep them, like, uh fruiting and sprouting mm. and growing rather than, you know, if I was, you know, a spoiled little, you know, 10 year old, well, it wasn't really 10, I'd say six. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be who I am now. So, yeah. you know, owning that and sitting in the power of like, yes, you know, you have so many factors against you right now. So many factors, but who's to say that in you can't you know, do it. 13 years time, you're not going to be sitting. And I always have this moment when I drive home and when I go up to like, and I'm sitting just at like at home because I live in a, in a skyscraper in the city. I always go, fuck man, like four or five years ago, I was commuting into the city or driving through the city and I would look at all the towers and I go, fuck one day I'm going to be in one of those. 
like one day, whether it's like a shitty little apartment, whatever it yeah. is, I don't care. I'm going to be living in the city. And that was always my dream was mm. to live in the city. I romanticized Melbourne so much. I love Melbourne. Um, and then I'm also like, wow, I'm sitting in a, I'm sitting in my lounge room yeah, <laughs> doing work <laughs> on my day off. Mm. Um, but I'm doing what I love. And that's absolutely insane to me. Yeah. Like, that's bizarre. How insane. So I think that's one. And yeah. My second one would probably be like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, definitely like staying, I guess, you know, um, staying true to yourself. And yes, people will try and use you for yes. what you are. And, and over, I guess, um, you kind of overcompensate and you, you try to protect yourself. But mm-hmm. again, they're lessons learned. Um, and not everyone who comes into your life belongs in your life and not everything that you have come into your plate or onto your plate, you need to consume yes. or, um, take for granted. Like not every opportunity is a good opportunity. Yeah. That is so good. Yeah. A little 10 year old dog or six but year old eat dog. all your food and, and eat that stuff. Like, yeah. and, do, do good things, guys. <laughs> do good things. But yeah, so I hope that like that kind of gives a little bit of an idea of yeah. like what we what we kind of do and like holy shit. We so, probably should do a second podcast because I reckon so there's much so shit. much more. I was thinking that as yeah, you were talking, there was I was like, so Fuck, much shit. we need to do two of these. Yeah, there's like there's a lot, and you know, there's there's in depth turmoils and and trials and stuff that we've been through. And don't get me wrong, I'm definitely not. In, at the end of oh, the journey of we whatever just it is. Starting, it's, baby. <laughs> we are just starting. Yeah, it's getting it's getting good. It's getting juicy. Like yeah. We're getting some like a little bit of a character twist and a character development plot right now, yeah. right? In the documentary that is my life. <laughs> but um there is so much that happened in the first year. Not even the first year of me being in business, which yeah. I definitely think is a lot to talk about and there's a big lesson to learn oh, for huge. other people. <laughs> so how can the people listening find you? Um, well, you can come to my house. <laughs> um, my address is... <laughs> um, just help yourself up to the elevator. There's make probably not a lot of food in the pantry, but help yourself. There's heaps of food. There's like a lot of pasta, dry foods, Cocoa Pops. Um, <laughs> and we've got low sugar um, or low salt Vegemite, which tastes like shit. So I'm oh, definitely not buying it Is that it even again. a thing? Yeah, it is. I just bought it because I thought it'd be fun. And it doesn't taste like Vegemite. Fun. It's shit. You it's know? not fun. And for something that's literally like not even anything. Anyway um instagram yeah what's your at your dom cowden um slash at pulse entertainment au um and then all our handles are the same across every platform so yep. if you want us on tiktok twitter which we haven't used in like five years yeah um they're all the same yeah um and you can just come and find me at my house yeah or at the clubs so where, are, at you, the clubs, where yes. are you residency so we are currently residencied at there's a lot so if you want to see us dance Form. We've got the Albion Fridays at the Albion. Um, Albion on a Saturday. We've got CQ as well. Um, Blush in Paran. Um, if you're interstate, you've got Kenton yeah. in Brisbane. We do I Heart Uni in Sydney. And we've got a few smaller clubs in Adelaide that we do. Um, and then just in terms of like, because I have to give a shout out to everyone, right? Um, Miss Collins uh, and then a few other smaller clubs. Like Flamingo, we don't dance there, but we, we provide staff yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah, there's a lot of clubs, but um, there's come, a lot of places to find holler. you. Yeah, yeah, Holy you shit. can find me at Melbourne Central as well because I'm always there. <laughs> so, <laughs> and if you see me, say hello. Don't be. Or afraid. like, if I look like I'm walking really fast, I apologize. I probably have not seen you, and I probably will keep walking. Or fast. Kate is yelling at me for not getting my steps in. Yes, which I didn't do yesterday, but it was my day off. Alrighty, Peace well, <laughs> that is going to wrap up today's podcast. So you guys know the drill. If you enjoyed today's episode, please give us five stars. It helps us reach more people all around the world and potentially help other people like yourself listening today. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye.